What is up my adventure crew, Nick Morris here. Welcome to another episode of Real Adventures Hawaii. If it's your first time here, welcome on board. If you're coming back, welcome back on board. Today, we're gonna talk about something that I'd say is super important and you wouldn't think twice about. We're gonna talk about crimps, crimpers and leaders. I, I guess a lot of things that people don't really talk about is crimps, the proper way to crimp. Um, I'm not saying it's the best way, they're just the way I learned how. And uh, let me see if I can probably put some value to it for you, help you out. Uh, the crimp is one of those things where it can literally cost you the fish of a lifetime. I know I've been there where I've had a, a crimp slip on me from maybe lack of or not paying attention to what I was doing at the time of it to just a bad crimp in general. Uh, and this can literally cost you a fish of a lifetime. I'm, I'm sure a few guys had experiences losing fish or crimps. Let me show you a couple of techniques that might help you with your crimping. And maybe you might learn something new and maybe help you stop from losing a fish of a lifetime. Alright, here we go boys and girls. Let's get to it. So we're going to be using 300 pound test leader here uh, with my crimper and a box of my crimps. Um, 300 pound test leader I know is 1.9 diameter. Uh, so for this, I actually prefer... Uh, the crimps come in all different sizes. I prefer the double crimps. The bigger ones versus the... The little single crimps. Where's the little single crimps? All this stuff has a purpose and a reason. And sometimes you use single crimps, maybe you're trying to make something a lot more low profile. The double crimps are more for the, the strength, okay? Uh, the main thing with crimps is you want the crimps to be uh, it's snug and close to the, the fit of the line as possible. You don't want a loose crimp in the line. So like I said, this is 300 pound test leader right here. 300 pound test leader with a 1.9 crimp and this is a fairly snug line to this to this crimp which is what you want you don't want a loose line and the reason being is you want the line to be right in there snug in the barrels you don't want it to be um, too loose where it can move around the barrels if it's too loose in the barrels you're going to get a bad crimp on it okay and let me show you what I mean by that so this is um, like I said when I, when I crimp there's a few ways to do it okay one way is you can pull a lot of your tag end off, and what guys will do is this little tag end right here, they will actually burn that. This little tag end, they'll burn it, they'll pull it down, like so, and then they'll crimp it, and that will just give another chance of it not slipping, okay? Um, for me, I don't do that. Uh, the way I was always taught is you leave a little bit off the tag end, if you can see there, just a little bit off the tag end. And what I like to do is what I I, I like to do the the back crimp first, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna crimp the back side. I mean by the back side, we're gonna put the crimp right there. This this size crimp hole that we're using is actually made for the 1.9 size, the size crimp hole that we're using, okay? And if you can see, there's a little bit of an edge. I'm not all the way to the edge of the crimp. There's a little bit of an edge sticking on the crimp, just a very very little bit of the edge sticking out. Like one millimeter, okay? Let me exaggerate a little bit more so you can see it. About a millimeter sticking on the back side. See that? You hit that back crimp and you're gonna hit as tight as you can, okay? And that's with the 1.9. It's gonna look like that. The reason you leave a little bit of a back edge is it won't tighten down tight and will, it will stop you from pinching your line, which is key. You do not want to pinch your line there because that would be a weak spot for you. So next thing you want to do is you're gonna do a 1.9 again. And you're gonna go by the front side. Same thing, very, very important. Leave a little bit of a gap. You can see it there on the camera. The crimp is sticking out just a little bit. See right there, just a little bit sticking out, okay? We're gonna hit that as tight as we can go. And if you can see, the two ends are not smashed at all, and the middle has an opening. We didn't hit the middle, okay? And to me, that's the tight, that's the, the strongest way to do a crimp. What you can do now is what I tend to do is I'll go one size down. I'll go one size down, okay? We're at the 1.9 or we're at the 0 0.5 to 1 on the crimper. And I'll hit it one more time. Not as hard, but I'll hit it one more time just to give me that extra reassurance. You can see it, that's a perfect crimp job. Both ends aren't pinched and the middle is wide open. It's not pinched at all. And this will be, this crimp will guarantee, I guarantee you this crimp will not slip on me. So this is the, the proper way to crimp, okay? Let me show you a little smaller line with a smaller crimp. And the key with this is, if you can see right here, 
the the crimp doesn't really fit the line perfectly if you have to use a crimp that's not the right size like a little bit bigger what i would suggest is if you see the you see the line right there it's kind of like right against the other line before you crimp it i would say space the line out with your finger you see all my fingers right there spacing the line out that's going to be key because if this crimp sits right on this line right there it'll go it'll smash weird and it won't give you the crimp so i highly suggest for using a slightly bigger crimp for the line space the line out with your finger like i said this is a single crimp we have the same thing we did but just one crimp in the middle okay watch your edges don't don't pinch your edges now once you get it Once you get it in there crimped, you can let go of this tagging because it's going to stay up right where you were. So you can actually come over a little bit more on this. A little more over by the other side. And like I said, you want to leave it in the middle where it's crimped in the middle. Okay? And like I said, see these two are real separated. You want them right next to each other. But technically, I would redo this crimp. I wouldn't use this crimp. And this is the this is the, the problem with bigger uh bigger crimps on smaller line if you look at this crimp it's actually a super ugly crimp it's not crimped good at the front it looks like it's just smashed and that right there can potentially cost you a fish it's not a perfectly it's not perfectly uh crimped around like the other one it has a, a weird bump in the front and that right there can cost you the fish of a lifetime if it hasn't cost you a fish of a lifetime yet something like this will so take the time with your crimps do it the right way and uh like i said poor preparation leads to poor performance all right guys, so I hope you guys like my Tackle Tip Tuesday for crimps. Probably one of the most uh, underlooked things in fishing is the crimps, but this is one of those things that will cost you a fish of a lifetime. I mean, this is the main thing between you and a fish of a lifetime, this little thing right here. So, I hope you guys like my Tackle Tip Tuesday. I'll see you guys on Thursday for, uh, I guess, uh, a vlog, uh, before the fishing kind of a vlog. It's so funny to get ready for Friday, and I'll see you guys Friday. And uh, we should, Friday should have the 5,000 uh, giveaway on Friday. And that's going to be a good one. You don't want to miss it. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for the notification, and give this video a thumbs up. All right, guys, as always, tight line, stay fishing, and I'll see you on the water. Hello, everyone. Mm -hmm.